What's up everybody, it's Blaze here and in this video we are finally going to get started with our UI. So if you can hear trucks or boats or construction happening in the background, they are tearing down, still tearing down a bridge, an old bridge here in my area. So I apologize in advance, but there's nothing that I can do about that. Uh, but uh, Let's get back on track with this video or with this part of the series. What we're going to look at is the UI and we are going to look at it in a lot more depth than what we did with the HP bar. This whole section will be divided into two separate parts. All right, so we have two parts and part one will be the intro part, I guess. So in part one, which is going to be in this section, we are going to work with the parent, so the base button. And I'm just gonna write that real quick there. So we have the base button as well as all of the functionality that goes with it. And then part two will be the individual button's actual function and what it's going to do. So for example, if we have the attack button, it's going to allow us to target other units and then if we have the, say, the defend button, it's going to up our unit's defense and things like that. So that's what we're going to do for part two. We'll call that button functionality. I hope you guys can read my handwriting, but that's basically what it is. Um, now, these two sections are going to be subsections of the UI as a whole. Okay, so it's going to have part one, which will be this part, and then part two. Um, and so this video will cover only this first section. I am going to create a separate theory video for each individual button functionality. The reason being because for the functionality, we need attack logic, or we need to write a whole new set of code for attacking. We also need to defend. And while we don't have that yet, we will also need skills, right? Now, this functionality, skills functionality won't come in until much later in the series, towards the end. Um, but truth be told, we're about uh, maybe two thirds of the way, so we don't have much to go with this really simple version of your combat system. Some people did mention um, they wanted to see things like numbers and stuff popping up in the UI as well as the game in general. And so for, in terms of the UI thing to address that, we might have an optional part three section where we have general UI stuff, okay? So this is basically things like, I don't know, character panels and things like that while we are playing the game. But I think UI might be a bit too general. I think what we'll just call it is buttons. Right, because mainly we'll be working with just the buttons system in general, right? So things like having layers for each individual UI section, and then of course, the interactive side of it. So just the interactive UI or yeah, interactive UI. I should have just left it as interactive. But anyway, that's more or less what we are going to look at. <clears throat> Let's take a look now at what we're going to focus on. Right, which is the base button functions and all of that stuff. So let me get rid of that and let me put in a new layer. All right, so what do we need for our base button functionality? Well, the first thing that we're going to need is we're gonna work in the room first. And in the room, we are going to set up the actual size of the room as well as the camera itself. So we're going to resize. This one is optional. You don't have to resize or adjust the room size. It's completely up to you if you wanna do that or not, but that's what we're going to do for ours. And then what we're going to do is we are going to enable, right? which means that we are going to start using the camera so that our UI can scale to whatever size we need it to and everything should be appearing in the right space or the right place that we put it. Okay, so we're gonna do that. For our viewport, what we're going to do is we are going to set the, uh, 
the I think it's the W or the H, I forget what it is, but we're going to set the actual camera settings. The camera will be 480. Wait, 480? Yeah, I think that's right. 480 by 360. Right? That will be our camera width and height. The actual viewport, so what we'll actually see on screen, will be to uh actually no not 1080 it'll be 1280 by 720 right that's what our viewport will look like all right so that's the room itself on top of that we're also going to add in three instance layers these are going to be the layers where we will put our buttons right so our buttons will be on different layers depending on what we need it to do the layers in order of importance will be the base layer where essentially we can choose what we're going to do. So we'll be able to attack, defend, or use a skill from this base layer, right? So let me just write that down. We can attack our skills. Now we haven't implemented skills yet. So we will have a layer. We will have a layer and a button for the skills, but it won't work until we actually start implementing things. So we'll just leave that for now. The next layer will be the targeting layer, All right? So this, this layer is directly linked to the attack. So the attack, when we click the attack button, All right, I'm just gonna draw that there. I'm gonna right click. When we click this button, this will disappear. The base layer will disappear and instead it's going to go to the targeting layer. So just to illustrate that, if we have say attack and then we have a defense button, just pretend these are buttons on your game screen and we have skill. When we click the attack button, all of this will disappear and we'll be able to go into the targeting menu. And the only button that we're going to have in the targeting menu is going to be the cancel button. So let's say, for example, you're playing your game, you click on attack and you decide, no, maybe not attacking is the better option here. Maybe I should defend. I should get my unit to defend. We need to be able to go back to the base layer by clicking cancel. And when we click on cancel, right, just like this, we are going to be able to loop back to the base layer. The same thing will go for skills, although with skills we need a second layer, which will be the skills. Now, like I said, we haven't got any skills into the game yet, so we can't really do anything with it, but knowing that it's there and ready to go for when we do need it is definitely an assurance. All right, so this, let's go back to this picture again. This is our base and over here, this is our uh, targeting. Now, just having these buttons isn't going to be enough. We need to do stuff on top of that. We need these buttons to trigger other events. Let's start with the base first because I'm getting off track, to be honest here. What we're going to focus on in this particular section is, like I said, the room and getting things set up in general. So this bit here. This is really important. Getting the three instance layers for our room set up, but also, and I'm going to use this to segue into the next section, we need to create the base button. Now you can name this whatever you want, but this is basically going to be the parent, parent object for all buttons in the game, or at least all of the buttons in our little demo, in our little game scene. So that's what this is going to be all right maybe i'll call it uh, p button or something like that just to keep it in line with everything else with the other naming conventions in this particular project but uh for our parent button we are going to need uh four events we will need of course the create event create we will also need the step event and then we will also need and for some reason, this is really weird, the way that Game Maker has done it, but we are going to need the draw. We need the draw event as well as the draw GUI. 
All right, so that's what we're going to need. Those are the four events. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second, but uh, I just want to mention that for some weird reason, um, if we are going to take this approach, we need to have the draw event because weird things are going to start happening <laughs> if we don't do that. Actually, in truth, this button system that we're creating is a fairly simplified version of Pixelated Pope's um, UI system. So if you guys want to see that video, I will leave a link to it up here in the cards, or you guys can go down into the link below. I'm going to pin a comment to the top of this uh, video as well so that you guys can see the full version of it as well as get the download links. So once again, this is a simplified version of Pixelated Pope's UI and interactive UI system. Um, it is a pre-GMS 2.3 version of GameMaker Studio, but it still works even now. So that's really good. All right, let's take a look at our create event just a little bit more. So our create event, what we need are two new macros. We need macros, which will get the, which will convert the mouse, mouse to GUI space. Right, and we're going to need that for both X and Y. So those are two new things that we're going to add. In the step event, actually, no, before the step event even, we need to talk a little bit more about the create event here. I know my writing is on, a, is on an angle, so let me try and fix that with this next line. So with the create event, we're going to need two states for our button. We are also going to need states. And the states will be really simple, active, active. And of course, the opposite of that is inactive, just like that. All right, so that looks good so far. Um, we are also going to need to immediately set the draw speed. The image speed needs to be set to zero. Image speed will be set to zero. All right, so that's, that's basically all it's going to be for our create event. In the step event, what we're going to do, because this is the parent object, we still need to have functionality for any child objects that it might have. So we are actually going to have a redundant line of code, but we'll see that much clearer once we start programming it in. In any case, for the step event, what we're going to do is we are going to program in the, the actual position for the mouse X and Y. And we need to check if the button is active right active and then if it's true we are going to run if uh not is if not is if we are going to check first if it's active and then second if the uh, left mouse button uh is released you want to activate whatever functionality we have if it's released or mouse up, then we will run whatever code is here. Okay, so this code here, code. So for example, if we are programming in the attack button, then it's going to run the attack code. If it runs the defense, if it's the defense button, it's going to run the defense code and etc. etc. Right? That's basically what it is. Draw will have nothing in it. It will be an empty event. There's nothing happening in draw. So like I said, it's kind of something weird going on with GMS that with this particular approach for having buttons, if we don't have the draw event, it's, it throws things out of order and that kind of looks weird, makes it look weird. So instead in the draw GUI event, we are just going to draw self. Okay, so that's that's basically all of that that's going to do. We are going to be focusing our energy, at least for this part, in the step event and, of course, the create event up here. We're not done with the base button, though, because we're actually going to start using instance 
variables. Okay, so let me clear this up. Let me add in a new layer. So instance variables, an instance variable is basically a variable that you can set at runtime, but even more than that, you can also set it in the room editor itself. So it's very useful to have that. Our instance variables, we are going to have first the name, right? We're gonna have some text there so that we know what button does what. And then we're going to have a hover function. There we go. And basically the hover function, we don't have it yet, but once we get into unit targeting, which will be in this section, but not in this, uh, not in this video, we will be doing it as part of UI as a whole, just not in this part of the uh, tutorial. But uh, our hover function will be useful for say, I don't know, maybe you want the button to change color when you're hovering over it, that's fine. But for us, we're just going to use it for targeting. So it won't have much to do for now, but we're gonna have a hover function for that. And then the other one will be obviously the main function, right? So if you guys can imagine in the room, let me just try and draw this up real quick. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but if you have an instance in your room, I believe the first room is always room one. So if you have an object in the room and you double click it, hang on, give me a second guys. All right, so I just had to cut that bit out because there was an announcement, a local announcement about staying indoors here in Tokyo. I don't know why they do that. But uh, like I said, if you have an instance in your room and you double click it, you can actually bring up an editor panel and it has all of the information of that particular instance. For us, for our buttons, we are going to be able to set the name as well as the main function of our base layer, right? So for example, if we have those three buttons here and they're all the same button, right? Then we can name whichever one we want to say attacking, and defending, and of course the skill button as well. So it's very, very useful to have this. So that's basically it. It sounds really simple, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure if it sounds simple to you guys, but this is going to be this first part of the UIs. Like I said, the second part, we will be dealing with each individual button as a standalone video. And so I wanted to keep the theory is separate for the two of those. So kind of take this one as the general video for all buttons that you'll have in your game. And then the next section for the UIs will be what each individual button will do. So once again, we will have an attack button, ATK. We will have a defense button, DEF. We will have a skill button, SKL. But we also will have a cancel button. Right, and like I said, imagine if you click on the attack button and you decide to change your mind, you need to be able to, well, back out of that decision, right? And so that's what naturally the cancel button is for. All right, so that's it. Now, if you're wondering about things like having an inventory and having an inventory button, unfortunately, we're not going to be covering that in this main part of the series. Some people have asked if I am going to implement other things for the UI and other functionality that I didn't initially plan for. And I'm considering adding that in as a supplementary series as soon as we finish this one. So I'm still thinking about it, what to do, uh, but that's basically it. That's what we're going to cover in this section. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys haven't already, then you can always like and subscribe and turn on your notifications as well so that you can find out when the next video will come out. I know I've been a bit slack on uploading, but that's just what happens when you work full time and do YouTube on the side. So I thank you for being patient with me, guys. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, that's all from me, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.